What's going on everyone and welcome to the 90th minute. I'm your host Lucas and as you can see, I am alone. No Waz, no Liam, no Greg. For some reason, they're all busy today and they left me all alone doing this by myself. Now, I don't really have to do this, but you know, I really want to talk about what happened this weekend and there is a lot that happened, but I also want to hear your guys' thoughts as well. So Bear with me for this episode and hopefully the other guys will be back next week. Now, there's topics we need to talk about this week is the Premier League title race, the top four race in that league, the Bundesliga title race, some Serie A, some La Liga. But to start it off, we're going to talk about the Coupe de la Ligue between Gengamp and Strasbourg. April Fools, we're not talking about that right now. If at all. We'll see. Today, we're going to start with the Premier League and... What game other than Liverpool versus Tottenham? Now, I am a Liverpool fan, so if I'm a little biased, I apologize. Now, this game was quite crazy. Now, with the first half, Liverpool were the better side. They were dominating the play. They created more chances as well. And they were the first ones to score with a nice cross from Robertson, who had a great game. His cross led to Firmino heading it into the back of the net. 1-0 Liverpool. They had a few other chances, including Mane's shot from outside the box, which I thought went in when I was watching. It was still 1-0 at the half, and people were talking about, man, Liverpool really needed a second. And that went on into the second half, where Spurs started to look really good. Now, over the second half, Spurs created chance. For the most part, it, they weren't the greatest chances, weren't that clear, but later on, they did score and tie the game up. It was a goal from Lucas Moura, and... You gotta have a little fall of Henderson for conceding the foul, but it was a well done play by Harry Kane getting the free kick back into play right away, switching it to the other flank where it ended up getting crossed back into Eriksen and he kind of scuffed his shot a little, but it ended up at Lucas Moura and it's 1-1. I was quite nervous during that time and Liverpool didn't help with that with some of the chances they conceded later in the half. They did make some tactical switches, bringing on Fabinho and Origi, which I think was a much better decision by Klopp compared to the team he chose from the beginning, even though they did start well. Uh, I'm just, like many Liverpool fans, I'm not really a big fan of Henderson, Wijnaldum, and Milner starting the midfield. It's just, it can work because they're quite defensively solid, but creativity-wise, it just doesn't bring the best out of the team if they can't get the ball to the front three it just kills any creativity pretty much but back to Spurs and they had a great second half you have to give it to them they definitely deserved a tie in this match and they could have even won it Liverpool were going for the victory and Spurs were ready to take advantage of them on the counter-attack including a two-on-one where Musa Sissoko oh man <laughs> What was he doing on that play, man? He was, it was him and Son against Van Dijk. Van Dijk did well to make sure he doesn't have a clear pass to Son, which would be a guaranteed goal. But Musa Sissoko, ah, not a good attempt by him. Completely skies the ball over the net. It was shocking to say the least. Any other player on the field, you might think, hey, he could score that. He could slot it into the corner or at least get it on target. But this was Musa Sissoko, and while he is having a great season, just not a great shooter at all. And that shot would cost Spurs as late in the game, Liverpool corner kick, Trent Alexander sends it into the box. Harry Kane clears it out, and it goes to Robertson. He one times it to back to Trent, and Trent one times the cross to Mo Salah. Salah heads it towards the net. Lloris poorly parries the shot and it goes off Toby Alderweireld's foot and in. Jubilation for Liverpool and just huge disappointment for Spurs as this could have negative consequences for them in their top four race but we'll get to that in a second. For Liverpool it was an absolutely important win. This isn't the first time Liverpool's won a game with a little bit of luck and yeah, let's just say luck because that Pickford moment earlier in the season against Everton, I mean, 
how do you explain that other than Pickford messing up like Lloris did? There's that Sturridge moment against Chelsea where he just bangs that incredible goal. Like, Sturridge has not scored many goals for Liverpool this season, and in his career, none quite as good as that. And that came you know, late against Chelsea where they were losing. And then against Manchester City, really early in the season, Mars had a chance to win the game against Liverpool at Anfield. And he just messes up the penalty. A lot of things are going Liverpool's way. And it'll be interesting to see if uh, it'll be interesting to see if Liverpool can continue carrying this luck or if Manchester City will be good enough. Manchester City played against Fulham this weekend and I don't I paid a little attention to the match. I, I was quite tired while watching it, but Manchester City weren't really that good. They did take advantage of Fulham making some dumb mistakes. But sorry, Greg, your team is getting relegated. Man, it was not the best performance. Luckily for Manchester City, Fernandinho was coming back, and what a good time to have him with this late stretch of the season. He's going to be instrumental for them for these last Premier League matches as well as the Champions League. Now. The title race is still on. If Liverpool tied that match against Spurs, it would have been really difficult. They would need Manchester City to dr lose a game, pretty much. And more than that as well. But now, Liverpool are on top by... I think it's just two points. Let's just double-check that. Liverpool are on top by two points, 79-77 to 77 of Manchester City. City do have a game in hand, so we have to be wary of that. They play against Cardiff midweek, and I think they should be easily winning that, but hey, you never know. Cardiff are fighting for their lives, and they've had some bad luck happening to them this weekend, which we'll get into in a second. Give us your thoughts in the comments, or tweet at us, or send us a message on Instagram. Let us know who you think is going to win this title race. There's six games left for Liverpool, seven for Manchester City, and... It's going to be a tight race. This is an incredible title race. Two teams, they both could they both potentially could get like high 90 points tally, which is insane. But seeing one of those two teams not winning the league will be quite sad. Well, depending on what side you are on. But enough of the title race. It'll, it'll continue on week in and week out. But let's talk about Spurs' loss and... They obviously did lose to Liverpool. That's what we talked about for the past 10 minutes. But it, this isn't good for them. They are still in the top four, barely, with 61 points, tied with Manchester United, and currently they're one point ahead of Arsenal and Chelsea. Arsenal have a game in hand, which they play on Monday against Newcastle. So that'll be interesting to see. Tottenham, this is really bad. I saw Hugh Wizzy on Twitter. He tweeted this about Tottenham saying, if Tottenham were to finish outside the Premier League top four, things could go from bad to worse very quickly. £600 million in debt and the second loan for the new stadium. Their strength has been keeping the squad together. Next seven league games could tear them apart. It's an interesting discussion to have. Like, if Spurs miss out on the top four, is this the end for this team? End of the era for this club that is moving to the new stadium in very soon. It'd be quite sad as you like to see teams build up and potentially challenge for titles, but they haven't been doing that. They haven't had enough investment in the squad, and a lot of this is quite similar to Arsenal when they were moving into the Emirates. While Spurs haven't sold many key players, they did sell some good players like Kyle Walker, for example, but they didn't sell anyone like Thierry Henry. Is this going to have a similar ending where... Spurs just aren't able to realize their potential. It's a discussion that's been made many times, but I'll be interested to know your thoughts as well. Now, moving on to Chelsea's controversial win, and I wasn't able to watch the second half of this match, but I just heard Chelsea were not very good. Cardiff did get the lead, but they conceded a goal which shouldn't have been counted. It was blatantly offside. And then Ch Chelsea later got a winner from Loftus-Cheek, and that was the end for Cardiff. And their schedule coming up towards the end of the season is not pretty, honestly. 
I would be afraid if I was a Cardiff fan because they still got a lot of the top six teams remaining. What else can I say? That those teams are tough. Like they got Manchester United, City, Liverpool at the very least. They do have some tough matches coming up and that includes playing Manchester United on the last day of the Premier League season and they could be done by then, which is really unfortunate for them because they fought so hard in that game and to lose it like how they did. And I don't blame Warnock for what he did after the game. Although, it's not something I would do necessarily, but he can't be too happy after what happened. No VAR is unacceptable in the Premier League. It's coming way too late. This result could cost them hundreds of millions because there wasn't this technology in place. It's unfortunate, but it's how it works right now. And something hopefully won't happen again. Now, on to Manchester United, and is it just me, or were they quite bad against Watford? I, I wasn't fully paying attention to the game, I had it on, but whenever I was looking up, Watford were having chance after chance, they were in United's box, they forced De Gea to make multiple saves. That didn't matter, because Rashford was able to score off the counterattack and give United a 1-0 lead. It's quite incredible because Watford, they ended up having 20 shots, 8 on target at the end of the game. And United only had 8 shots, 5 on target, which not really what you expect to see out of Manchester United at home. Like Ole Gunnar, who recently was announced as the United manager, kind of played closer to a style of Mourinho, you could say. Am I pushing it? I don't know, but it's really interesting. Marshall did get the second, and Wofford did get a consolation goal quite late. But Wofford, who have a FA Cup semi-final against Wolves later this weekend, they are a good team. I completely underestimated them at the beginning of the season, and they've proved me. I'm pretty sure they proved Waz wrong. And this was something one of our co-hosts, Liam, something he was right about. He, he praised Wofford quite a bit. Although, Liam, his predictions aren't perfect no matter what he says on previous shows. So, top four race is looking quite interesting. I, I, It's so hard to tell who's going to get in there. Right now, Arsenal is probably playing the best out of all of them, but I'm saying this before their match against Newcastle. Chelsea and Spurs are not playing the best, but Chelsea got the result this weekend. Spurs seem like they were going to finish third by a long margin, but... Now they're in this position, 61 points. They've lost four of their last five games. Ten losses in the Premier League. I'm so confused. Like, if, Even if they draw five of those games, they would be out of this discussion. But it's how it works right now. And these next six, seven games are going to be quite important in the Premier League. It's kind of obvious to say that, but it's true. Now, one last note about the Premier League. Huddersfield have officially been relegated, so it's sad to see them go. They had a nice story last season, but goal scoring has been their main problem this season and in general haven't been good enough. So we wish them well into the championship, but we'll see what happens. And Fulham will likely follow them within the next few weeks. Now, moving on to the Bundesliga dun, dun, okay. dun, dun. Yeah. title race. And man... What a weekend it was in the Bundesliga. Slightly overshadowed by what happened with the Liverpool match, but that depends if you are if you watch both leagues or not. This weekend was incredible in the Bundesliga. Now, our host Liam Peace and our other host Gray, they both say that oh, Bayern is going to win the league. Was was quite confident for a long time that Dortmund were going to win, but recent weeks let him being uncertain. I, myself, have been thinking Dortmund will win this league. I've been quite uncomfortable in recent weeks, but this result today, or this weekend, really helps them out a lot. Now, Dortmund played Wolfsburg while Bayern played Freiburg. Dortmund were at home, Bayern were away. Now, Dortmund played terribly for the most part. For the majority of the game, the most interesting part was the pigeon on the pitch. If you haven't seen it, just Google pigeon B Val B on Twitter or something because there's this pigeon in Dortmund's defensive end in the first half. Whenever Wolfsburg got a corner, you just see this pigeon just eating the grass or dirt or whatever it was eating on this 
on by the corner flag. Now this pigeon would reappear several times throughout the game. Like the halftime show was just them looking at the pigeon and it they tried to grab the pigeon and it flew across to the other side of the field. Thorn were not good at all. First 60 minutes were just a snooze fest. It was they were not creating many chances. Wolfsburg were defending quite well. Let's be fair to them, and they did create some chances off the counter attack. And while for the most part Dortmund's most notable chance was Sancho getting a shot on target in the second half, what mattered in this game was late in the 90th minute. Well, in the 90th minute, okay, maybe the 89th minute. I'm just rambling on right now. But a free kick for Dortmund at the edge of the box or top of the box. Now Paco Alcacer, I completely messed up that name there. I don't. I was thinking of two different pronunciations at once. Apologies. But Paco Alcacer, or Alcacer, he had a free kick. Now, earlier in the half, he also had a free kick opportunity, and it was probably one of the worst free kicks I've ever seen. Not gonna lie, it was terrible. But on this free kick, he took advantage. Paco Alcacer stepping up with the pigeon in the back of the net. He takes a shot, and... Somehow, Castile's the Wolfsburg goalkeeper. Doesn't block the ball, and it goes in. Dortmund don't care, they're 1-0 up in a crucial match. Each game is crucial, and they're 1-0 up. Wolfsburg were pushing to try to tie it up, but Dortmund were able to go on the counterattack, and Jaden Sancho, the wonder boy, what a run by him down the field, getting by a couple of players, and ending up pa passing the ball across the box, Brun Larsen, he ends up leaving the ball for Paco Alcacer, who gets his brace, and Dorman go 2-0 up, likely staying in first place, depending on the Bayern match. And in the Bayern match, they let in a goal quite early, third minute. Hootner, I think, for Freiburg scored. No, not Hootner, Huller. Yeah, Huller scores a goal. But then Robert Lewandowski in the 22nd minute, he scores a goal as well. Quite well done by him I, I don't know how to explain it. it was he's like his back is facing the goal and he ends up just churning and shooting which fair play to him but he would also be quite important later in the game for the wrong reasons now Freiburg were quite good in this first half where they were on the counter attack and to be fair Byron, Byron kind of looked like Byron early in the season because constantly the other team was getting up to the their box and if it wasn't for some uh, better decision-making, Freiburg could have been up in that half. One player I've been a fan of for multiple years, Vincenzo Grifo, he was brilliant in this match, but unfortunately in the last few years, he made a transfer away from Freiburg and hasn't been the player he once was, but he moved back to Freiburg and he's looking quite good. But for Bayern in the second half, they were very good. They... Should have scored multiple times, but for some reason, it wasn't working. They should have scored, they would have scored, but they didn't score. What else can you say? There's, They had chances to win the game. Bad luck and poor finishing. Two chances from Robert Lewandowski late, including a, a header where he heads it wide. Poor. It was really poor. And another chance where he just kicks it over the crossbar, which just wasn't good enough from Robert Lewandowski and even though he scored the goal to tie the game those are chances he should be scoring and it did cost his team points now it isn't entirely his fault because there's other chances in the game Byron had and they didn't take advantage of it now with the result finishing 1-1 that means Dorman go top of the Bundesliga and Byron back into second place a two-point difference between the two clubs and this is crucial because both teams play each other this weekend in their classic. It's incredible seeing these two teams so close to each other. A title race in the Bundesliga, which hasn't happened since probably 2012, which was, yeah, probably 2012. And this third classic coming up is probably the biggest one since that 2012 season in April, where Dortmund beat Bayern 1-0. From a goal by who else but Robert Lewandowski. In that game, Robin had a penalty to tie the game up, but got stopped. And they also hit the crossbar towards the end. Incredible scenes in that game, and hopefully much more of the same in the game coming up this weekend. Lewandowski will obviously play a big part, 
as he seems to always do in these matches. But it'll be interesting. So let us know your thoughts. Is Bayern going to win this match? Is Dortmund going to win this match? Is it going to finish as a draw? We'll find out. And this title race in the Bundesliga, like the Premier League, is might go down to the very end. Now moving on to Italy. The league is pretty much done. Let's not worry about that. And I'm not sure if much of our viewers really care about the relegation race. Or I don't know if many care about Serie A in general. But we're going to talk about it. And... Specifically the top four race, as this has had some interesting results this weekend. Now, I watched the Milan versus Sampdoria match, and I was expecting Milan to win the match, although Sampdoria are a strong team, but Donnarumma decided other things. As <laughs> For some reason, 30 seconds into the match, eh, kick it off the frill and back in, into the back of the net. Milan, de- Milan pretty much giving themselves a handicap, and Sampdoria took full advantage of that. They th- defended quite well throughout the match. Anderson and Colley, I believe, I think that was his name, they both had incredible matches as a center-back duo. I wonder if if some bigger teams might be looking at them or if this was just a one-off match from them. But for Milan, you have to be really disappointed. One complaint I do have is just the delivery from Milan's players. Rodriguez, Castillejo, Suso. Chalonoglu, they, they just couldn't give any service. It was quite terrible, honestly. Like, Milan didn't look like they were going to create many chances until Lucas Paqueta came on. He was incredible when he was on, but fortunately for Milan, they, it wasn't enough. There was a penalty late on where... I know a bunch of AC Milan fans thought it was a penalty. In my opinion, I think the ref got the right call. He checked VAR. Uh, the defender did get a touch on it, in my opinion. And I think it was the right call. Obviously, I can understand if you feel hard done by as it was a late in the game and it could have changed a lot of things. Now, the other teams in Syria, quite interesting. Quite interesting indeed. Roma got completely embarrassed by Napoli at home, losing 4-1. Now, Napoli are a good team, but they have nothing to play for in the Serie A, while Roma should be fighting tooth and nail for those top four spots. Instead of fighting tooth and nail, they had a toothless performance. And their president and Francesco and Francesco Totti would certainly agree. James Pilato, after the match, who is Roma's president, he said that these players have to stand up and show they have balls. I mean, with these recent results, it looks like it just wasn't the manager's fault. At least not only the manager's fault. These players have to take accountability. or Either that or they're not good enough. Maybe it's also Monchi's fault who didn't bring in the right players and got rid of the ones that were beneficial for Milan. I mean, not Milan, Roma. Also, Francesco Totti said after the game that we'll see what happens in the future. I can tell you that if I were to take on a new position, i.e. the sporting director role, I'd change something. I'd change some things. Which Toddy's certainly not happy. The Roman legend. It's tough for Roma, but it's something that their fans have to accept right now. Champions League is n- looking uncertain at the moment, and a lot of tough matches for all these top four contestants coming up. Now, Inter played Lazio as well this Sunday, and Lazio got the crucial victory. Inter, they could afford to drop a few points, but. It's obviously not ideal losing at home. And what went on doesn't help either because during the week, Icardi was training with the team and many expected him to start back for Inter. But in typical Pazza Inter fashion, Spalletti decided to drop him from the squad. Now, the reasons are a little unclear. One source I read said that uh, Spalletti at the beginning of a training session asked Icardi if he has anything to say and Icardi said he didn't, which kind of bugged Spalletti, apparently. So, if that was the reason, I don't know. But that soon was forgotten as Milan Kovic-Savic, he scored the goal to give Lazio the early winner. Him and along with Iago Aspes, they were excellent throughout the game. And if those two are on form for Lazio, they certainly will be in in contention for these top four places. It seemed for quite a while that Milan and Inter were going to have these top four spots locked up, but things are looking interesting in the Serie A top four race. 
Now looking at the Serie A tabletop four race, we can't count out Sampdoria, Torino, along with Atalanta because they're still in it within six points of fourth place. And the table is Inter Milan with 53, AC Milan with 51, Lazio with 48. Keep in mind, they have a game in hand. And Atalanta also have 48. Roma have 47. Sampdoria and Torino have 45. So it's certainly looking close. And these next these last weeks are going to be important. I, I'll see, I see Sampdoria and Torino, more likely Torino falling out, but Sampdoria maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Atalanta, I think they'll be in it till the end. I don't think they'll get the fourth place, but they're going to keep it close. They're a fantastic team. Zapata and Gomez, underrated players, and they definitely deserve more recognition. I still think the top four is going to finish as it is. I think Milan might even go ahead of Inter, but in AC Milan aren't in great form, so you can't. And La, and if Lazio go back to playing good football, and their top players are actually performing, unlike earlier this season, it wouldn't surprise me if they get into the top four too. All right, finally, we'll finish it off with Spain. And Messi, he got a brace for Barcelona. The controversy here was that Marca who run the Pichichi Award, which is the top goal scorer in the Spanish League. They took away the goal from Messi, which was a free kick, which ended up going off the face of a Espanol player. Now, it was on target, so by the rules, you I think that should be Messi's goal. But then again, the guy did head it into the net. So I'm pretty sure La Liga is counting it as two goals, though, but... Marca, the magazine who runs the award, isn't. So interesting, but Messi having a fantastic season. We don't need to say anything else about Messi. He's fantastic. Now, Madrid, they did win a match against Huesca. It took them until the 89th minute to get the game winning goal for Benzema. Zidane's team have had some close matches so far in his tenure, but they are getting the results, and there's lots of rumors about. Potential transfers coming into the team. Most of it is likely gossip and shouldn't be believed, but yeah, some good players are coming to Madrid. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the future for them. Because right now, these games, I don't know, I, I don't want to say they don't matter, but they aren't really playing for anything other than second place. Now, teams that are playing for something include Getafe, Alaves. Valencia, Sevilla, you could throw in Real Batiste in there as well. Those teams are fighting for the last Champions League spot. For a long time earlier in the season, Sevilla seemed like they had that spot locked. They were ahead of Real Madrid at some point. But now, recent months, they've just been dropping points left, right, and center, eliminated to the in the Europa League to a team from the Czech Republic. It's been pretty disappointing if you're a Sevilla fan, honestly. Machin, who looked really good as a manager with with Girona and with Sevilla throughout the most of the season, was sacked after the Europa League result. And they lost to Valencia today, who were terrible in the beginning of the season, but now are looking like they could potentially get into the top four. I'd be laughing if I told myself this back several months ago when Valencia were drawing games which seemed like every week. But they're within touching distance of the top four now. But Sevilla, not Sevilla, Getafe and Alaves, they had games where they needed to win. Well, not needed to win. I say Getafe, they needed to win their match. They played against Laganas, who are lower down in the table at home, and they ended up losing 2-0, which they're still in fourth place, but it's starting to get close. While Alaves, they had a difficult match against Atletico Madrid. All these rumors about Griezmann leaving Atletico Madrid, Saul leaving Atletico Madrid, Lucas Hernandez, who did leave Atletico Madrid, he well, he's moving to Bayern Munich in the summer, and he's not going to play another game for Atletico Madrid as he also had surgery, I think, for knee ligaments. Atletico Madrid they won four nil and yeah four nil and they're just playing for second place right now in the league it seems. Tough results for Getafe and Alves, who are huge underdogs in the top four race, but they are still in 
better positions than the other teams, but it's with nine games left, I just don't see them holding on. I think Valencia, they're they're starting to fulfill their potential of what they were like earlier in the season. Maybe not quite of what is expected, but they're performing better than any other of these clubs, I think. Right now, it's Getafe who have 46 points in fourth place. Alaves has 44. Valencia 43. Sevilla have 43 as well, but they're below on goal difference, I believe. No, they're not. They're, I think it's just head-to-head or something. Now, I want to mention Athletic Bilbao. They're they're in there with 40 points, but they were in relegation zone earlier this season, so fair play to them for coming back and having a good season at the end. They could still get top four. You never know. Now, the other thing that's quite interesting about La Liga is the relegation race. Now, you can say that for most leagues, but this one in particular... It's quite interesting. Both Villarreal and Celta Vigo played each other this weekend. They're the 17th and 18th place teams of La Liga, and they're just having poor seasons. And a big part for Celta Vigo is because Iago Aspas, their star player, has been injured for a couple months. For Villarreal, I just, I just guess they're not playing well. I haven't watched too much of their matches, but you'd expect a team with their quality to be doing a lot better than 17th place. They did start the game well against Celta Vigo with a 2-0 lead, but in the second half, a fantastic comeback from Celta Vigo. Who else but Iago Aspas getting the winner to give Celta Vigo a crucial 3-2 victory. After, he was subbed off later and he was seen in tears in the bench because he's had a rough couple of months not being able to help his team, the team he loves so much, and... It's nice that he's back, and hopefully Celta Vigo will be able to get out of this situation, along with Villarreal, because I think they're both teams are too good to to get relegated. So right now, Villarreal have 29 points, and Celta Vigo have 28. Uh, Valladolid is ahead of them with 30 points, but you would expect both teams to be able to get ahead of Valladolid, and Valladolid getting relegated in the end. But you never know. You've... There's some crazy things that happen in the Liga every year. So, we'll see what happens. It's It'll be intriguing. So, that's really all the topics I really want to talk about. I know there was also Ronaldo. He got injured during international break. Aguero, I forgot to mention that, that he got injured. So, those are ones to watch. With the Aguero one, I kind of got fooled earlier. I read a tweet from Mark Goldbridge saying that Aguero's out for the season. A couple seconds later, I realized that, yeah, it's going to be April Fool's, so my bad there. But yeah, that's everything I have to cover for the 90th minute, so give us your thoughts, and apologies if this was really bad, I'm, I did my best. Now, if you want to watch a episode with at least a few of our hosts, check out our last episode where we talked about some international teams and our thoughts on the favorites for Euro 2020. Now, give a like on this video or uh, five stars or whatever you do on the podcast apps. And yeah, let us know your thoughts on anything we've discussed. And hopefully the host will be back next week. Until then, thank you for watching. And this has been another week in the beautiful game. Take care.